In this video, I'm going to talk about pixel angles. And I've started here on a freeze frame of Shiko in a match from the 2020 Invitational against Fnatic, in which he's holding a pixel angle. And as I play this forward, you'll see that he mows down the defender so that far, walks into his line of sight. Shiko, if you don't know, he plays for Team BDS in Pro League, and he's one of the very best fraggers in Siege, if not the best fragger in Siege. A lot of people fixate on imitating his wacky mouse sensitivity settings, but if you actually watch him play, one of the things that I think really sets him apart is his excellence at finding and holding advantageous pixel angles. He's certainly not the only player who plays pixel angles in Siege Pro League, but if you watch him move around the map, he's just constantly setting up these angles for himself, not just on defense, but on attack too. And after getting that kill we just watched in the clip, this illustrates my point. The, the very pathway. next thing Shiko does is maneuver into another virtue. great pixel That's angle the... on the yellow stairs. Pixel angles sound like a really simple thing, but there's actually some complexity to what separates a good pixel angle, which can net you a kill, versus a bad pixel angle, which won't. The fundamental challenge with pixel angles is that if you're holding a really tight angle, the window of opportunity to shoot an opponent who runs past your line of sight can be really short. And if you tried holding a pixel angle before, you've probably had this experience. You think, oh, I've got this angle. But then an ash blows straight past your line of sight and you can't react fast enough to shoot her. Or maybe you only had one shot in her arm and now your position is exposed and ash just repeats and lights you up. So you might think that the key to pixel angles is superhuman reaction times and that because you're not shy, go, it's hopeless for you. But that's not true. What separates Psycho is not just his superhuman mechanical skills, but the fact that he sets up smart pixel angles. And I'm going to prove that to you by looking at a rare exception in which Psycho sets up a not-so-smart pixel angle and misses his shots, despite being one of the best Siege players in the world. To set up this situation, we're on Cafe, we're watching Psycho, he's in Bakery and looking towards the bar dining area. And Shiko is getting hot pings that there is someone just around this corner to the back left, and he's holding a pixel angle on the other side of that corner. Now watch what happens. Rough ship here, Fnatic. I'll play that one more time in case you missed it. Rough ship here, Fnatic. The opposing player blows past Shiko's pixel angle, and he's not able to react fast enough to land the shots. And we know that the problem here is not Shiko, because he's the best player in the world. The problem is the angle he set up. It wasn't a favorable angle to enable him to land those shots. So what makes a good pixel angle? Well, let's switch now to bank, and let's take a look at this as an example of a good pixel angle. There are three ingredients of what makes this a good pixel angle. First of all, you're looking for some kind of corner or doorway or rotate hole that you anticipate an opposing player might want to push through. Why? Well, because there's a good chance that the other player is going to slow down, if not come to a complete stop, once they reach that corner or door frame or rotate hole because they're worried about what's waiting for them on the other side. And a target that is stationary or slow moving is going to be much easier for you to hit in that pixel window than a target that is sprinting past it. Second, you want to find an angle facing that corner that is on a diagonal as opposed to being on a straight perpendicular angle. And the reason for that is that if the other player swings past your line of sight when you're sitting perpendicular to it, they're going to be a faster moving target and you're going to have a shorter window of opportunity to hit your shots. And I'll illustrate that here outside of Oregon in an open space. First, we're going to see the ash sprint past left to right. And that creates a very, very short window of opportunity to shoot her. Next, we're going to see the ash walking right to left. Still, even though she's not sprinting, it's a very short window of opportunity. And now we're going to see the ash walking on a diagonal towards us. And you see how that increases the amount of time that you have to actually land the shot, even though your angle isn't any wider, your target spends more time in that angle because they're walking on a diagonal as opposed to a straight horizontal line perpendicular to you. And I showed in that video some figures of how much time the opposing player was on the screen that you had a chance to land your shots. And to give you some sense of how long of a time that is and how long of a time you need, there's a website called humanbenchmark.com, which, if you've never been, runs tests of your reaction time and also shows charts of other people's reaction times in this basic test where they flash a green light and they measure how long it takes you to click. And what that chart shows is that the absolute bare minimum human reaction time is 125 milliseconds to click in response to a stimulus on the screen. But the average reaction time is a lot closer to 200 milliseconds, if not even more than that. And that's under ideal conditions where you're intently focused and all you have to do is click. If you have to aim and react at all to hit a shot, that's going to add more time. 
if we go back to what that example was in that test we ran of an ash running past, an ash walking past, and an ash walking on a diagonal, that made a huge difference in terms of our ability to react. When she was sprinting past, we had no chance. When she was walking past, we barely had a chance if we reacted as quick as humanly possible. But when she was walking on a diagonal, we had a real chance to hit her. And if she stops on the corner, which is a typical thing to do on a corner, then you have an even better chance. So let's go back to my list of ingredients one more time. The third and final ingredient of a good pixel angle is that you need some obstruction in between you and the other player that narrows the line of sight. And that makes you a smaller target if the other player decides to shoot back. That is the fundamental advantage that you're trying to create with a pixel angle. But there is a point of caution here. It is easy to create pixel angles if you position yourself snug up against some kind of wall or door frame or other object on the map. But you need to be careful about putting yourself in a situation where the enemy can see you before you can see the enemy. You've probably heard about this issue of asymmetrical perspectives before. It's something that's common to pretty much every FPS, including CSGO and Valorant 2. There are lots of YouTube videos that go in depth in perspective if you want more on that, but I'll just illustrate it here with a really simple example. Here I am in the basement of a bank, and I've set up this pixel angle for myself by snuggling up tight against the side of this truck. Right now I cannot see the line on the other Time side of this truck, in 10 seconds. but you can see me. Ideally you want the obstruction to not be too close to you, and if it's close to the opposing player, even better. That'll prevent you from being in a situation where you have a perspective disadvantage. Here's another pixel angle at the top floor of Bank, and it's actually kind of the same angle we just looked at before, just a floor above and the floor plan is pretty similar. But here you'll see that there are two slightly different variations of this angle, one where you're closer to the obstruction and one where you're further away. And if you look at how exposed you are to an opposing player peeking the corner, you can see that it's less when you're further away. Another note here is that your profile is slightly thinner when you're standing and leaning as opposed to crouching and leaning. It's not a huge difference, but you can see that when you're crouched, your knee bows out a little bit more than the rest of your body. And that brings me to the end of the talking part of this video. I've shown you already a couple of pixel angles on bank, and I'm going to close this out now with a montage of a few more pixel angles from Cafe, Consulate, and Clubhouse, all of which I've picked up from watching just a couple of pro matches. Once you get the hang of recognizing these angles, you'll start to see them everywhere, and I hope it can help you win more gunfights on both attack and defense. I hope you enjoyed this video, and now, as I finish off this montage, I'll hand off the audio to a random selection from YouTube's royalty-free music collection.